The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and his followers went as far as Capernaum. And as soon as the Sabbath came, Jesus went to the synagogue and began to teach. And his teaching made a deep impression on them, because, unlike the scribes, he taught them with authority. In their synagogue just then, there was a man possessed by an unclean spirit, and it shouted, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus said sharply, be quiet, come out of him. And the unclean spirit threw the man into convulsions and with a loud cry went out of him. The people were so astonished that they started asking each other what it all meant. Here is a teaching that is new, they said, and with authority behind it. He gives orders even to unclean spirits and they obey him. And his reputation rapidly spread everywhere through all the surrounding Galilean countryside. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So very good morning to you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Now, yesterday evening, we had Bishop Bernard Paul here from Lekker Johor Diocese. He came to celebrate the Mass, you know, for the end or the closing of our Congress, Eucharistic Congress. Now, how many of you were here yesterday for the Mass? Raise your hands. Oh, a good number, huh? and you came again today. Wonderful. But I think majority were not. Huh? So, he shared a very interesting homily yesterday about his own personal experience as a priest, where there was, uh, and I'm going to just relate it to you, because I thought it was a very good uh, faith-inspiring story that he shared, which I think is good to also uh, share with you. So, well, I suppose maybe there's a recording of it yesterday, so you could also just watch the recording. Do you all want to just watch the recording? Okay, anyway, go and watch the recording in case I don't relate the story properly. <laughs> okay, so anyhow... Um, he shared that when he was a priest, you know, there was one day when he needed to go and give uh, communion and anointing to a sick person. And as he was about to go out, uh, a family brought a girl, you know, who was uh, kind of disturbed by some kind of, uh, don't know, spirit or whatever it is. And so, you know, this, he relayed the story of how she was so uh, fearful of him and, you know, how, just summarizing his story, you know, she kept saying, the little girl kept saying that it's very bright, there's a bright light, so she was closing her eyes, wouldn't look at him. And then later on, you know, he, he prayed over the girl and eventually whatever it is that was disturbing the girl left and the girl came back to normal. So he himself experienced that. So I, I thought it's something nice to share with you all because rarely we hear of this kind of stories unless we are watching the, the exorcist all the time, you know, and that's Hollywood. You might not want to believe what you see in those movies. But here was a, a bishop who had experienced it himself and he shared. Now, but the beautiful part of the story is not so much about the girl being freed from the possession. After the family left, he was wondering, you know, what was this bright light, you know? And then he realized he was carrying the Holy Eucharist in his pocket. That's why the girl was saying there's a very bright, blinding light, you know, and that's why she won't open her eyes, don't want to look at him, you know. And uh, he w shared that, you know, to tell us, you know, how sometimes we don't realize the Eucharist is the real presence of our Lord Jesus. And then it struck him that, oh, that was the bright light. It wasn't him, like, it was the, our Lord who was there in the Eucharist. So it was a very nice sharing yesterday for all of us who came for the Eucharistic Congress, you know, to strengthen our faith in the presence, uh, the real presence of Christ. And just as when he was walking on earth, he was casting out the unclean spirits, he continues to walk with us in the Holy Eucharist. That's why churches are holy places. There is the tabernacle lamp to remind us of that, that Christ is truly present. And that is why sometimes for us Catholics, we are a bit strict 
in church, we tell you don't make noise, we tell you behave yourself, everything. But actually we should be telling you, remember whose presence you are in. He is truly present here. This is not just, uh, what's that, a day one, you know, a day one for us to have gathering. It is a church, it's a holy place, and it's holy because Christ is truly present. So that's the beauty of all our Catholic churches. You see the tabernacle light is on. Our Lord is truly present. Okay, so for those of you who missed the Eucharistic Congress, okay, at least you heard one of the faith sharing that was given yesterday. I hope that will strengthen your faith also in the Eucharist. Now, talking about all these things about unclean spirits and all that, perhaps some of us may have encountered some kind of, this kind of disturbances. Then we would call the priest to come and bless you, to come and bless your house and all these kind of things, right? Now, there was another priest, he told me a funny story, what happened? A family tricked him and said, Father, come and bless my house. Actually, they were having some disturbance in the house, but they don't want to tell the priest. So they said, never mind, we bring Father, see if really there's a disturbance, Father will know. So we don't tell Father, and so the fellow innocently went. He was a young priest, and he, poor fellow. <laughs> kena tipu, kena trick. So he went totally unprepared. So he went, and he blessed the house, and then the Lord, you know, kind of showed him that, or made him realize something was wrong. Family was keeping quiet. And then he asked the family, is there something wrong with the house? That's why you call me to bless. And then he said, oh yes, Father, yes, actually there is. There's something right. Ayo, but he was tricked, you know, because as a young priest, didn't have enough experience. He didn't pray the prayer of protection for himself. He did not confess his sins before doing the blessing. He all didn't do. He thought simple blessing only. Kena tipu, kena trick. Poor fellow. Anyhow, Turns out there was something unclean in the house and the Lord showed him what it was and he removed it from the house. Yeah? It was just an object. So it was a very simple thing. It was just they had to take that object and just remove it, get rid of it. That's all. After that, the family was fine. Okay, so it can happen. But anyhow, don't go and trick the priest like this. Poor fellow, you know. Yeah. He was very shaken by it. So happened he brought two seminarians with him also. And so the seminarians also were not prepared. And they were also, that evening, they were attacked. Yeah, because they were not prepared. So they felt some disturbance, like as though something was disturbing them. So they prayed that evening and they were okay after that. Alright. But sometimes, you know, there are so-called this kind of disturbances and all that. But it may not really be anything. Sometimes it's also psychological. Sometimes family is, you know, worried and disturbed about other things. And then people are putting in their mind, oh, maybe somebody has done something to your house, somebody has done something to you. Uh, then the power of suggestion makes you paranoid. So sometimes actually there's nothing. The priest will tell you, assure you, there's nothing actually. Yeah? And once the assurance is given, you're okay. Now another thing is, uh, what do you call that? If we are persons of faith, we should not fear the evil one. Are we persons of faith or not? We are, right? We are receiving the Eucharist every Sunday all. How la devil going to possess you? Jesus is in you. Holy Spirit is in you. You are temple of the Holy Spirit. Is the devil more powerful than God? Of course not. Right? So don't be too paranoid about this. If you are a good practicing Catholic and you are coming for your Sunday Mass, you are receiving the Eucharist, you are confessing your sins twice or once a year, or whatever it is, or every other month, there is no way for the devil to enter into your life. Ah, but if you're a Catholic who is going to Bomo, going to don't know which place, going to this medium, this tanki, going to don't know what, all these things, asking for fortune and all that. Now, what are you doing? You're opening your heart for the devil to enter. So sometimes our Catholics fall into this, sadly. Sometimes influenced by other friends or relatives or whatever, you know. So be careful, be very careful. You don't need any of these things. Right? You have the most powerful thing that is in you, and that is God. Yeah? And with that, enough. Don't need to seek help from anywhere else or anyone else. God is your helper. He is there to protect you, to guide you, and to give you the strength that you need. Okay, now one other case, sometimes in hospitals. So for those of us who don't have much medical knowledge, or first time only going through experience of somebody uh, falling sick and all that, Sometimes, you know, some patients, those who are doctors, they will know, they go through something called delirium. 
and they can even be hallucinating, they will be seeing things, they'll say they are hearing things, and they'll be talking nonsense or so. So sometimes the family will panic as they quickly call father, don't know what possess our relative that is there sick in the hospital. But actually, it's a medical thing. They are going through that because there's some problem in the brain, and normally they will, uh, psychiatrist or psychologist, psychiatrist, I think they will prescribe some medication. Sometimes once the blood works are okay, all the whatever imbalances, electrolyte imbalance and all kinds of things all settle, person comes back to normal also. Yeah, so if you have not heard of this word, delirium, go and Google it. Improve a bit of your knowledge of medicine. We don't all have to be doctors, but we'll be facing hospital situation, relatives who are sick. Educate yourselves and don't just be superstitious. So uh, religious people, sometimes we can be very superstitious. Everything, we will jump the gun and we will say, it's the devil, it's this, it's that. Not necessarily. Okay, how many doctors are here today? In the Nurses also, okay, they will know because they will see this happening very often in the, in the hospitals, uh, in the wards and all that. So don't be so shocked. But anyway, you call the priest, the priest will come also, of course, we will come. Because we need to anoint the sick, we need to pray over them, all that we will do. Lah. But Okay, anyhow. All right. So, okay, enough about all these things from the gospel today. All right? So, just remember, you are temple of the Holy Spirit. God is in you. Don't be afraid of all these things. Devil is not more powerful than God. Our faith teaches us that. God protects us. He is with us. And we ourselves must never dabble in these things. Put our faith totally in God. Don't ask for trouble. Because evil is real. And if we stretch out our hand to the devil... He will take every opportunity to destroy us and destroy our loved ones and our families also. So very be careful. Always only trust in God. Okay. Now, today also I wanted to talk a little bit about the second reading. Usually we ignore second reading. Lah. As I told you before, St. Paul lah, is very difficult to explain. You all have heard that from me many times. But I think today I don't want to ignore St. Paul today. Yeah even if it means the homily will be just a little bit longer. He starts off today with this sentence, I would like to see you free from all worry. First sentence of second reading today. Did you all see that sentence? Okay, never mind. Sometimes first sentence, we might not pay much attention to it. And St. Paul says, I would like to see you free from all worry. All right. Anybody here? can raise up your hand. You are free from all worry. Anyone? Tada. Worry. This, I think, is something everybody is facing, isn't it? Yeah? If you are a family man, you are worried about your finances, sometimes you are already in your, later in your years, you are worried about your health, worried about the children's future, worried about so many things. Even you are actively serving the church, so you'll be worried also. <laughs> worried about yesterday's congress, everything, whatever you're in charge in. Life is full of worries. And St. Paul also actually, I'm sure he worried also. That's why he knows what a terrible thing it is to be a person who is worrying all the time. That is why he wishes that everybody could be free from worry. Yeah? And uh, it's terrible, this worry, it becomes stress, it becomes very a burden in our life. Now you want to use a more religious language, you say, oh, it's one of the crosses in my life. <laughs> As though God gave us the worries, never mind about that. But worry is part and parcel of our life. But later on he goes about, he's talking about it in one particular field, one particular area, and that is about being married or not being married. Yeah. So he's saying that if you are a married man, you're going to have a lot of worries. If you are an unmarried person, you'll have less worries, like, actually. And his purpose is to tell us that he wants us to give our undivided attention to the Lord. So that's the last sentence of second reading today. So first sentence was, I would like to see you free from all worry. Conclusion was, so that you can give your undivided attention to the Lord. Now, all of us here who have worries, uh, I guarantee you, we can't give our undivided attention to the Lord because our attention is divided. It's divided all over the place. Isn't it true? 
That's why we find it so hard to practice some of the spiritual things, to live a very spiritual life. It's very difficult because we are still living in the world. We are still dealing with the affairs of the world. So it's hard to be spiritual. And the church knows this. That's why church wants all the priests to be celibate. Okay, anyway. I'll blame St. Paul. I won't blame the church. St. Paul, he was a celibate or so. Anyhow. Um, and that is why church also wants us at least once a week you come to church la, for mass. We know all the days full of all kinds of things. Your work is demanding attention from you. Your family is demanding attention from you. This and that and everything. And you don't even have time for yourself. And if you don't have time for yourself, even you won't have time for God. Isn't it true? This is the big problem. That's why a lot of people are not religious. A lot of people are not church-going people. A lot of people are not spiritual also. Because they are totally caught up in all the things of the world. Not because they are worldly people, but just because they are living in this world and so many things are thrown upon them. And they go through so much stress and in fact, it is the most miserable life to live. When you have no time for yourself and worst of all, you have no time for God. That's why church says at least la, once a week, you must come to church. Your father is crying for this, your mother is crying for this, your wife is crying for this, your child is crying for this. For your own sake, please come to church. <laughs> So that at least you have one hour, maybe one and a half hours if the homily is long, <laughs> one and a half hours where you don't have to worry about all these fellas. Leave them outside the church, come inside and you'll focus on God. That one and a half hours will give you the strength to face the next six, seven days of nonsense that you have to face. That precious one hour or one and a half hours don't let anybody take that away from you. It's a precious gift for you, actually. Yeah? And that's where you recharge. You'll be recharged. If not, you'll be like a flat battery. We need that spiritual recharge. That is what will help us to continue living in the world. So, faith. Your life as a Catholic, this practice of coming to church, receiving the Holy Eucharist. This is so important. It is really food for your life. And Jesus gives you the strength to carry all of those crosses that you can't run away from. You have to carry them. So now you know why we have to come to church once a week. It's not because keep holy the Sabbath day, obligation day, don't come mortal sin. Okay, true also. But that's not the real reason. real reason is we need God. And we need this time of spiritual rest. And we need it. And nobody should take it away from us. Okay? So I hope this gives you a better reason for wanting to come to church. Yeah? Not just out of obligation. It's part of your me time. A lot of people looking for me time, right? The best me time is your God time. When you are with God, that is the best time you can be yourself. Without the judgments of anybody, without the expectations of anybody, without the burdens from anybody, because you are with Jesus. And he says, come to me, all you who labor and are overburdened, I will give you rest. That is keeping holy the Sabbath day. Come to Jesus. He will give you the rest that you need.